like to turn it over to Ian Murray. Ian is the president of Spot On Productions, a second generation member of his family's business. Ian has learned the power of stories and communicating. Producing video is a great outlet for his passion for people and unique story that each of us has. Working 15 years as a firefighter and a paramedic and years of volunteering for a number of nonprofit, nonprofit boards, Ian understands how individual stories impact us every day. Let's welcome Ian, everyone. Sadly, I wish we could do this in person. I am a people person and I love the interaction, but we're going to share story in a little more personal setting, one-on-one -on -one today. So I'm going to share my screen here. We're also going to test the bounds of the internet because I've got some videos I would like to share as we go through this. So we will see how all well this works. All right. My presentation up here and you will rock and roll. All right, so today we're talking about the power of story in business. I think this is an often overlooked uh, thing that businesses get distracted on marketing, but they don't tell their story. Uh, story is really about creating an authentic connection with people. Uh, today we're going to go through the why of story, why we should use story, the how we can build a successful story, and then what types of stories we can tell. Big quote person, so you'll see a couple quotes sprinkled throughout here. But story is the language of the brain. In 2009, a man, a journalist named Rob Walker, wanted to find out this. Is storytelling really the most powerful tool of all? And in order to do this, he went on his computer and he bought 200 objects from eBay. The average price of these objects was about a dollar and he called 200 authors and he asked them, hey, would you like to be a part of this significant object study? Which means that I would like you to write a story about one of the objects. <clears throat> he got 200 authors that said yes. So there he had 200 objects and he had 200 stories. And I assume that it is with incredible anticipation that he went on eBay again with all the 200 objects. Would there be a difference? Would there be a change? Do you think there was a change? One of the objects was this, this beautiful horse's head. This beautiful horse's head was purchased for a mere 99 cents on eBay and was sold when story was added to it for $62.95 which is a slight increase of 6,395%. So you can see story is very powerful. But you might say, is this a one-off situation? And not really, because he bought the 200 objects for a total of $129, selling them for $8,000. That is insane. So taking a simple thing, purchased on eBay, adding story to it, created incredible value in return. Think about what we can do with that in our businesses. I remember as a small child when my parents would tell me it was time to go to bed. You run upstairs, you get in your PJs, brush your teeth, and then you crawl into bed. And right before my parents would turn out the lights, in one last attempt to stall, I would say, how about a bedtime story? Some nights I would pick a favorite book, but other nights we would read one of Aesop's fables out of a compilation book that we had. There was a story of a boy who cried wolf, where I learned that one seldom believes a liar, even when he's telling the truth. Or the tale of the wind and the sun, where I learned that sometimes gentle persuasion is mightier than the strongest force. Everyone knows the one about the tortoise and the hare and how slow and steady wins the race. And probably one of the ones I remember the best about the ant and the grasshopper and how it's always best to prepare for future days of necessity. Almost all fables are written to provide a moral lesson to the reader. They teach about life through the use of animals who symbolically represent human traits and flaws, and they stick with us because they're engaging and easily remembered. They told a story. As a young adult, I learned that Jesus used stories or parables because it made lessons easier to understand and remember for the people that he spoke with. Storytelling is an art form often lost today among snippets, sound bites, and buzzword copy, which is unfortunate because story is how we've connected with each other since language began. The goal of business 
is to profitably deliver value to people to get a product or service from point A, the business, across that gap to point B, the people who will use it. That's it. There's an infinite number of ways to achieve this goal, of course, but overall the goal is pretty simple. So regardless of the type of gap you face in business, you have to master three main elements to have any hope of building a bridge strong enough to get your intended audience across the great divide. Those are attention, influence, and transformation. First and foremost, the best bridges must capture attention and captivate your audience so that they know the bridge is there in the first place. Then the second element, influence, is the means by which you're able to compel the audience to take the action you desire. And third, if you don't want to have to keep bridging the same gaps over and over again, the best bridges transform the audience, creating a lasting impact and leaving the audience changed so they never even consider returning to the other side of the bridge, thereby closing the gap forever. Marketing is no longer about the stuff you make, but about the stories you tell. There's another quote, and I don't know who says it, it's used in sales a lot, facts tell, stories sell. With sales and steady decline in the loss of one, their once effortless title of King of the Gum Mountain, Extra Gum had some thinking to do. They did what many of us would have done, and they went back to their basics. They went back to what worked in the glory days, focusing on what they were known for in the 80s, long lasting flavor. Extra buckled down and created more messages about how extra, extra really was. And the results were abysmal. Extra gained little if no attention and their sales continued to slide. Their problem when it came to critical less than two second moment in the grocery store aisle when consumers might choose extra gum off the shelf they didn't extra needed answers so they hired a research firm to determine why people buy gum in the first place and when the gum buying decision is actually made it turned out that 95 percent of gum, dis gum decisions were made unconsciously without the buyer even knowing it this meant the extra needed to get deep into the psyche of their zombie gum buyers to bridge the fresh breath freshening gap. They had to fill the gap so it's more than just buying gum, it becomes about the human experience. They also learned that in one of the deeper driving emotions for gum purchase was the social aspect of sharing it with others. You pull gum out and you share it with those around you. Something also true of other breath freshening options like Tic Tacs or Altoids. Gum is about togetherness, closeness, and connection, all things that are pretty important to the human experience. But how do you do that with something that's as commoditized as gum? How could extra tap into the emotion when their consumers stared blankly at rows of gum sitting on shelves and a flash of greater meaning would cross their minds and connect them to extra and they would make the sale? So in 2015, extra turned to story.
extra, get extra. So watching that video, we connect emotionally. We're taken back to when we were in high school, young love, being a part in a marriage proposal. Extra told us a story. They told us the story of Juan and Sarah, and they also subtly dropped their product in the story. A piece of gum shared at the very beginning when they met, and all of the sketches in the final scene drawn on the insides of extra foil wrappers. So there's gum in there, but it's about so much more than that, and it always is with story. It worked. The response was everything that Extra could have hoped for. Tweets and retweets, including celebrities like Ellen DeGeneres, Facebook posts, and YouTube viewers even voted it as out of the year in the gives you the feel categories. But really the success of the campaign was measured entirely on whether or not people purchased packs of Extra Gum. And yes, yes, they did. Extra was able to reverse their declining sales because they bridged the gap with story. The power of storytelling is exactly this, to bridge the gaps where everything else has crumbled. The benefits of storytelling are real and compelling. Story is one of the most powerful business building tools in existence. It captivates, influences, and transforms customers, stakeholders, and more, closing the gaps in business with bridges that last. Sadly, in today's world, the literary folk have given way to numbers people. The modern gold standard for truth about ourselves and the foundation of political action is measurement and its resulting statistics. Literary types used to run the world. To understand life and society, people counted on great orators and poets and interpreters of sacred texts. Political, moral, and literary power were the same. Apt analogies and convincing metaphors were taken as arguments and not just petty wordplay. But why is story so powerful? It has to do with neuroscience. Just as the brain detects patterns in the visual forms of nature, a face, a figure, a flower, and in sound, so too it depicts patterns of information. Stories are recognizable patterns, and in those patterns we find meaning. We use stories to make sense of our world and to share understanding with others. We go so far as to even create stories where none exist. Think about when Something happens around you and you don't exactly know what happens, but you build a story in your mind to explain and rationalize what's going on. Stories are the signal within the noise. We are as a species addicted to story. Even when the body goes to sleep, the mind stays up all night telling itself stories. And there's a scientific explanation for our love of stories. When we hear a story that resonates with us, our levels of a hormone called oxytocin increase. And oxytocin is that feel-good hormone. It boosts our feelings of things like trust, compassion, empathy, and it motivates us to work with others and positively influences our social behavior. Because of this, stories have a unique ability to build connections. Great brands know this, and they tap into its power to build a base of engaged fans. When we hear facts, it activates the data processing centers in our brains. But when we hear stories, it activates the sensory centers in our brains. A group of neuroscientists at Princeton University studied this. In agreement with previous work, the story evoked highly reliable activity in many brain areas across all listeners. Communication is a shared activity resulting in a transfer of information across brains. The findings shown here indicate that during successful communication, speakers and listeners' brains exhibit joint, temporarily coupled response patterns. The speakers, listen, speakers and listeners' brains exhibited joint, temporary coupled response patterns. So let's look at what this means. These neuroscientists found that when listening to a well-told story, the exact same areas of the brain light up on an MRI in both the storyteller and the listener. Your brain as the listener mirrors the brain of the storyteller. In other words, when you hear a well-told story, your brain reacts as if you are experiencing it yourself. Your brain places you inside the story. There's even more neuroscience that goes into the power of story and attention from hormones like cortisol, vasopressin, serotonin, endorphins, and dopamine to the brain circuit called home or the human oxytocin-mediated empathy. It was a very much deeper dive than we have time for today. 
storytelling is an essential business skill. It makes data more compelling and communication more effective. In 2007, an experiment was conducted by an organization called Mercy Corps. They're an agency that's aiming to eliminate suffering, poverty, and oppression around the world. And they wanted to test two different approaches to raising funds. So they created two different fundraising campaigns. The first campaign followed the typical approach. People talked about the work that Mercy Corps does, how they've been able to grow over the years, thanks to the support of donors, and how the money was spent. And at the end of it, they asked for action. They asked their audience to make a donation. The second campaign told the story of Giselle, a 12-year-old girl in Eastern Congo who fled her home with her family to escape the violent conflict raging around them where they lived. Despite the unimaginable conditions without regular access to food and clean water, Giselle's biggest worry was her father, who had been trapped behind enemy lines, was unable to join their family and escape or even know if he was still alive. Giselle's story was one of many that Mercy Corps was working to change. So two different approaches, one very direct, the other a little bit indirect, and in the end, Giselle's story was 22 times more effective in generating donations. Storytelling is highly effective, and when done right, it can influence your audience in ways that just communicating facts and statistics cannot even come close to. The story you tell is far more important than the thing that you sell. A company like Google, obsessed with data, how can a company like Google make telling you what they do from search results, maps, airplane tracking, how can they make that memorable and connect with people? Something very simple showcasing what Google is able to do with their service was done masterfully by telling the story of a person going to Paris, falling in love, deciding to change careers and move to Paris, getting married and then having a kid. Stories constitute the single most powerful weapon in a leader's arsenal. Unfortunately, in the drastic swing of the storytelling pendulum, we've gone too far in the opposite direction. Now we think that everything is a story. Stories become a catchword. Uh, if you click on a link that says our story, there's no telling what you're gonna find. Somewhere along the way, stories became known as brands and somehow we forgot that no, not everything is a story. When we look at advertising, meeting pitches and boardrooms, we quickly realize one thing that despite the acceptance of the concept, there's still a lack of understanding in what actual storytelling is in business. The Super Bowl is a marketing phenom. One of one third of all Americans sit down and watch the game in any given year. And for advertisers, the combination of the eyeballs and focused attention is gold. Because of the viewership, in 2014, ads were going for $4 million per 30 second spot. But what makes a great ad when you're spending that much money Johns Hopkins professor and researcher Keith uh, Cusenberry knew he actually predicted in advance that the ad would be the favorite that year. Not only was the ad he picked the most popular ad that year, but it was rated the most popular in the history of the Super Bowl. The ad was the most shared ad of the game with consumers spreading the word about it more than the rest of the top 10 combined. And normally I'd ask you, who do you think it was? It was Budweiser. It was called Puppy Love. But how did Cusenberry know it was going to be so popular? Because it told a story. Story beat out. Sex appeal, humor, celebrity power, and even cute puppies.
Well, you only need the light when it's burning low. Only miss the sun when it starts to snow. Only know you love her when you let her go. Only know you've been high when you're feeling low. Only hate the road when you're missing home. Only know you love her when you let her go. And you let her go. Cusenberry observed that it doesn't hurt that the marketer is using a cute puppy, but the spot would not have been the same if it was 60 seconds of a puppy playing with a Budweiser bottle. You would not have had a hit commercial with that. So summing up why a story, story is the most effective means of human, human connection. There are three main reasons why telling the story is the best way to achieve your goals. First, emotion leads behavior. Emotions play a huge role in directing human behavior and story is the strongest way we have to move our audience. Second, it lets us be a witness. We're bombarded with nearly 5,000 ads per day telling us what we need, how to feel, what to do. Story cuts through that noise by inviting viewers on a journey and allowing them to come to their own conclusions. And last, story transports us to another world. And the scientific term for this is narrative transportation and it refers to a story's ability to immerse viewers so that their surroundings disappear. Narrative transportation is highly correlated with the action the viewer takes when they're done watching something. Narrative transportation is that effect where we get sucked into a movie or a story or a show and it's over and we're like, oh my gosh, I just lost an hour and a half of my time. It went by so fast because you become a part of the story. To be a person is to have a story to tell. So hopefully by this point, you're convinced about the power of story, but where do we start? How do we build a good story? What are the basics of story? Every good story follows a format and there are a number of different formats that all have a different emphasis and they all work in their own way. There's story brand seven step heroes journey and guide format. They do a lot of great work with business marketing. We're not going to cover this format, but it's definitely worth looking into if you want to get started with story. The Muse storytelling process is the structure that we use the most in our business. It was developed by a filmmaker with a background in psychology, and it's a deep dive into the elements of story and what makes a compelling visual film. We're going to touch more on this here in a minute. The last one I'm going to mention today is from a book written by Kendra Hall called Stories That Stick. I like her format because it's very easy to remember. It's a great book. I highly recommend you read it if you're looking to use story in your business. And we're going to mix the, the story format I'm going to present is a mix of hers with the Muse format. So according to Kendra Hall, she identifies four components of a great story. They are identifi identifiable characters, authentic emotion, a significant moment, and specific details. And we're gonna dive just briefly into each one of these. Every story needs an identifiable character, but it is more than just our classic hero. We don't need a hero, we need somebody that we can connect to, somebody that we actually care about. And Muse calls that person the heart of the story. People or characters are how we connect to the viewer emotionally. It's through the character and their experiences that we create an empathy among the audience. Any good heart of a story has three main things. They have desire. What does the character want beyond what they have? The character's desire is what connects us to them and allows us to fall in love with the character. The more they want something, the more we want it for them. They have uniqueness. What makes the character different? The uniqueness of each character helps draw the audience in and capture their attention. As people, we love novelty. And then last is complexity. What is the why behind the character's desire? Complexity is what gives the character depth and helps create a deeper connection with the audience. It's characters like Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games, a regular girl just trying to survive. She didn't set out to save the world, she just wanted to save her sister. 
and she became what was the Mockingjay in a dystopian society. Authentic emotion, it's really through emotion that the story receiver experiences empathy with the story. It's that hit of oxytocin. No emotion means no empathy, and no empathy means reduced impact of the message. Authentic emotion is driven by purpose. Purpose is the objective behind your story. Having a deeper meaning is what leads your story to being remembered, and it's critical to having impact. And last is the place. This is where your story happens. It's the rooms, the scenarios, the places. Help us form trust with the audience, allowing them to believe our story and connect the purpose behind it. Place helps build authenticity and trust. And then significant moment and specific details really tie into the story's framework and structure. The significant moment is a specific point in space, time, or circumstance that sets the story aside from the rest of our existence. It's a way to take what might otherwise be a broad, generic uh, idea and zoom in tight to allow the audience for a better view. Often where messages that are intended to be stories go wrong is they stay too vague, too high level, too broad, too general. For a story to be compelling, it should include in specific moment in time or physical space. And specific details are what signal to the audience how deeply the teller understands them and builds a strong connection between the audience and the teller and the message. Specific details engage the imagination of the audience, so it sucks them in. This component pushes the audience into a deeper dive in the world of story and when that world is done right, it will look and it will feel familiar to the audience. Uh, the extra story does a great job of that. It provides us relatable moments and specific details that we can all relate to and we can say, that's me. A bad story has a single defining characteristic and that is we don't care. We don't care about the story at the end of it. To tell a good story, one your audience will care about, invest in, you have to be strategic. If you think back to your fifth or sixth English, fifth or sixth grade English literature class, you'll probably remember terms like the beginning, the middle, the end, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, conflict, resolution. If you remember those things, you're already halfway through knowing a, knowing a solid story structure. Kinder Hall says that all good stories follow the beginning, middle, and end framework. These are the building blocks for any story. And she redefines the beginning and middle and end as normal. Things are how they are. The explosion, something happens. And then the new normal, things are different. So the normal is where you give your audience a reason to care. You build that story up front. The explosion is the happening, the moment when things change, where things were going along as normal and then suddenly they're different. And finally, you have the new normal. This is the transformation. This is where you share with your audience what life is like now after the explosion. In business, the new normal is what makes the story worth listening to. It's what makes your product, your service impactful and matter in the eyes of your audience. Well, I think these are a great high level overview and you add a few more pieces to this I think are critical and that's plot points. The hook is the first plot point that Muse identifies. It's the opening to your story and determines whether people watch the rest. You've got to grab their attention immediately. Have you ever seen a pilot or a news, tried to watch a new show on TV? A lot of times I know I will, I will say, I'm not going to go any further because it, it builds so slowly. There's nothing that grabs my attention right off the bat. Whereas if you watch Mission Impossible, it starts with an explosion. It draws you in. Somebody's running out of a building. Now you have my attention. So that's the hook. You've got to grab attention right off the bat. The next thing is conflict. Every good story has a conflict. If you don't have a conflict, you don't have a story. It's probably the most important plot point to strongly identify. It's the moment the character runs into a challenge or obstacle. Conflict creates the question in the minds of the audience, will the character be able to overcome this? Conflict engages the audience as they want to know what happens and what, so it keeps us invested through the rest of the story. 
And there are six universal conflicts when you're trying to identify it. It's man versus self, man versus man, man versus society, man versus machine, man versus nature, man versus spiritual. Man versus spiritual is your typical horror film. Uh, man versus nature is something like a natural disaster type movie. Uh, man versus machine is I, robot. Um, so you will find that these are the six core conflicts in any good story. There's going to be one. There might be a couple, but there's at least always one of these. So from conflict, we go to initiation. Initiation is the moment the character decides to take on the conflict. This is their first meaningful step towards overcoming. It's the transition from the beginning of our story to the middle of our story. The middle of our story is the journey. Everybody in a story takes the journey. These are the main milestones, the setbacks, or the successes that happen as the character tries to overcome their conflict. This is the best point to use those, those significant moments and specific details because these are how the audience best relates to the journey. It's the things that draw us in that we can relate to. Then we get to the resolution. So we've climbed this hill. We've gone from conflict and starting our journey. We're walking through our journey and now we've resolved our journey. We're headed home and we're headed for the end of the story. The resolution is our emotional crescendo, the climax and the resolution to the conflict and that question we set up earlier, will they make it? Then we end it with the jab. Last but not least, that jab is the ending point to our story. This is the part a lot of people forget about or do not execute on. The jab is the opportunity for your call to action, to spur action for what you want the audience to do. In business, this is the moment of action we've been waiting for. If we tell a phenomenal story and don't have a call to action, we've wasted our time. So now that you have a basic story structure that every story follows, I wanna put it in action one more time. And this is one of my favorite, um, stories from the sheer fact of how simply it's told. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish. <laughs> Granny. Hello. Hello. Have you done your homework? Adam. Good general strike. Ready or not. Here it comes. Island clashes with British. Live ammunition against deserve to get shot. Nice day, Air strikes on rebel position. We are going to stay. Tapping! I love this story. It is so strong and so well told. I have a daughter that is almost the same age as this girl, so I can relate of what that's like for this girl. Um, it's relatable everyday things. We start with this girl. She's our identifiable character at a birthday party blowing out her candles. That's our hook. What's going to happen? The girl wants to be a kid. She wants to grow up in a normal, safe environment, but there's war where she is, and that is working against that desire. That's our conflict for this story. She leaves her home to stay safe. That's that initiation, that significant moment. And she goes from being a happy to scared to surviving. And we see an authentic emotion through that. We see her fear, we see her sadness. She's separated from her dad at the gate. The stakes are high, her very life is at stake. It's the journey. We see all these steps she goes through during the escape. 
We see how everyday life deteriorates around her. We see these specific details that help us relate to this story. And the last shot is the girl blowing out her candle on her birthday cake. We've gone from a birthday to a birthday. We've, we've gone a year. This video is impactful because it doesn't resolve. It uses a story gap and it asks us as the viewer to step in and resolve it. That's the jab, the call to action saying, it does not happening where you are, but it is happening. And the video is called uh, the most important second of every day. And you see one little second snippet out of every day of this girl's life. Why video to tell a story? Selfishly, it's because that's the industry I'm in. I think video tells a story uh, better than a written out story. You can use written stories on your website. It's a great place to put them. But hopefully as you've seen throughout this, I've shown some video examples. Video is incredibly powerful at telling stories. This is a stat, a one minute video is worth 1.8 million words of text. And why is video more persuasive than other content types? Uh, because 90% of the information that is transferred to the brain is visual. Video information is processed by the brain 60,000 times faster than text. I'm gonna prove it to you here in a second. And when you put video on your website, visitors are 85% more likely to buy after watching the video. That is powerful stuff. So we know that data, um, and we know from the data that video is more persuasive, persuasive than written copy, but why? Here's a test, very simple. What is that? Visual description, it's a circle. It takes my brain tenths to millionth of a second to look at that and figure out exactly what it is. If you give me a textual description of it, a curved line with every point equal distance from the center. I've gone from fractions of a second to multiple seconds to do the exact same thing. You make it visual. The other reason is when it comes to persuasion, one of the video's biggest advantages is the ability to transfer visual and auditory information at the same time, which research has shown increases information retention. Advantages of video compared to other visual media include the ability to transfer information or emotion through tone of voice, body language, facial expression, music, and stories. So basically video allows you to use both your auditory and visual cues to tell a more compelling story. And if your video is designed strategically, well, using that story format, using those plot points, these elements will work synergistically to create an emotional state that better connects to your audience. We talked about um, the human voice is able to com convey emotion more than text on a page. You get things like inflection, you get tone and other auditory cues. Our brains are hardwired to trust the human face. Uh, it's something called the fusiform facial area and makes us pay attention to, to faces. It's biology. We start doing this from the day we're born and we start doing this with our parents' faces. We track people, we track faces. Uh, so putting those people in your story uh, makes it engaging, compelling, emotional. And then last, movement captures and keeps people's attention. This is a survival mechanism. Uh, that was designed to keep us alive. You see the tiger running at you from the corner of your eye. Uh, and it has served us well for thousands of years. And you're probably noticing there's a little movement at the bottom part of your screen. It, it attracts your eye and draws you in. So I will leave you with this. What story are you guys going to tell? How are you going to use story to better connect with your audience and tell the stories for your businesses? Here's my contact information if anybody wants to follow up after the fact.